everybody, it's Georgia from the Oliver Hazard Perry with another Ask Us Anything question. You asked us about the statute mile and the nautical mile, and frankly, why there were two of them. Well, today we're going to take you through a little bit of history and tell you all about the statute mile and nautical mile. We're even going to throw some oxen, Queen Elizabeth I, the Phoenicians, and some Romans in on this. Statue mile, as we know it today, originated around 29 BC with the Romans. The Roman mile is measured as 1,000 paces of a strong, well fed, rested soldier, about 5,000 feet, and was used to measure how far their army would travel in a day. This mile spread through Europe as the Romans spread their empire, lasting well until the mid-1500s. In 1593, during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, the mile gained an additional 280 feet. It allowed the mile to properly fit into the British measuring system, bringing it to a total of 5,280 feet, and created the statute mile as we know it today. So why is there a nautical mile, and why don't we use the statute mile in the water, like on land? In order to understand where the nautical mile came from, we need to understand a bit about latitude. The equator is a line of latitude that separates the northern hemisphere from the southern hemisphere. Latitude represents an imaginary line drawn horizontally around on the Earth and measured in degrees from the equator based on the angle of a given position on Earth to the North Star or Polar Star. As a small or rather large side note, remember the North Star or Polar Star is 323 light years away and our diagram for all this is really, really small in comparison. Back to the nautical mile. The ancient Phoenicians sailed the Mediterranean doing exactly this. They noticed a star in the sky that never seemed to move, so they used that as a reference, finding their latitude by measuring the angle of this star, now called the North Star, with the horizon. If you see the North Star at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizon, you are at an angle of 45 degrees of latitude. And since you are in the northern hemisphere of the Earth, you are at 45 degrees north latitude. Wait a second. If you want to get technical, Polaris doesn't actually sit atop the North Pole, but instead appears to travel in a relatively small circle just orbiting around the North Pole. If you want to learn more about that and how to determine your latitude by Polaris, stay tuned for an upcoming video. If you stand at the equator, the North Star is at zero degrees angle. It's right on the horizon. And if you are at the North Pole, the North Star is straight overhead at 90 degrees. So we end up with zero degrees at the equator, 90 degrees at the North Pole. Since this worked quite well, it made sense to have 90 parallels north through the equator from zero to 90 degrees. The measurement system was simply repeated for the Southern Hemisphere, giving us 90 degrees of North Latitude and 90 degrees of South Latitude. In the Southern Hemisphere, there is no polar star. So we use a simple set of measurements using the Southern Cross constellation. Using 10 degrees of latitude is one thing, I guess, if you're in the middle of the ocean, but you really need a lot more detail. So we need to get down into single degrees, and when we start getting into tighter and tighter, more and more detailed space, we realize even a degree of latitude is a big distance, and we need to break that down even more into smaller and smaller parts. So we're gonna use minutes and seconds of latitude to get down to that detail level. First, there are entirely two different kinds of minutes and seconds, so you have to be careful not to confuse them. We use minutes and seconds to denote time. We use minutes and seconds in navigation to help us find location and distance. In each case, they are simply one sixtieth of a larger unit. When we measure time, we divide each hour into 60 equal parts called minutes, and each minute into 60 equal parts called seconds. We do the same thing when we're measuring angles. Each degree is divided into 60 minutes. Each minute of angle is divided again into 60 seconds. The units are different. An hour is not the same as a degree in any sense. They have no direct relationship. So why did this happen? Well, the ancient Babylonians liked the number 60, and in fact, they based their entire numbering system on it. The way we base ours today on 10. So any unit they would create would be divided naturally into 60 equal parts. And that worked well for various reasons. So early astronomers used this measuring base to measure angles, dividing a circle into 360 parts, and then dividing each of those parts into 60 minutes, and then into 60 seconds. The word minute, in fact, just meant little part, and the word second meant second division into little parts. And that's why each degree of latitude is broken into 60 minutes, and each minute of latitude is broken into 60 seconds. So let's get back to the distance and the nautical mile. In 1637, the nautical mile started to appear, but it had varying lengths depending on who you spoke to, because the actual size of the Earth was yet to be nailed down. So there was no standard for the nautical mile, or the measurement of 1 60th of a degree of latitude, until 1730. That's when the distance of 1 60th of a degree of latitude 
one minute of latitude was nailed down. So how long is a minute of latitude? What is a distance? How do we find that out? We know the circumference of the Earth is in fact 24,900 statute miles. Remember the statute mile, 5,280 feet. The distance or length of one degree of latitude, 1 60th of the circumference of the Earth is 69 statute miles. One minute of latitude is 1 60th of that, or 1.15 statute miles. So as of 1929, we had the International Nautical Mile and everybody, oh wait, not everybody, Britain and the USA didn't acknowledge the International Nautical Mile until 1954, when they both recognized it, and it became the world standard that we know today of one nautical mile equaling 1 60th of one degree of latitude. That's a totally different length than the 5,280 feet of the statute mile. The nautical mile at 6,076 feet fits perfectly in our latitude measurements and works for the way we handle latitude and longitude in our grid systems used today. And that is why we have a nautical mile, and that is the difference between a statute mile and a nautical mile. As a parting note, whenever you're working with a chart and you're out there sailing, don't forget, always use latitude for measuring because latitudes are parallel and the distance between latitude lines never changes. Don't use longitude for distance. We'll talk about that perhaps in another future Ask Us Anything video. I hope this answers some questions about the statute mile, the nautical mile, and how latitude comes into play with working out the history of the nautical mile. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more fun videos from the Oliver Hazard Perry.